Welcome to a recap of today's Python and Django live code session. Today we've been working on the companionship care app on a relatively small feature. When you have a, a person who you're coordinating care for, this is me, I'm the care coordinator for Charlene, and you have multiple companions, it can be useful to be able to remove a companion. For example, if you uh, employ someone temporarily uh, to help with some of the uh, caregiving activities, you'd want to remove them at uh, the end of their service. So essentially, we've got a care coordinator here on this screen and the other person who's um, just one of the companions on this screen. And the idea is that only the care coordinator should have permission to remove the companion and the caregiver uh, coordinator probably shouldn't be able to remove themselves. When we click on uh, the remove button, we want to make sure that that wasn't an accidental action. So we will pr uh, present a little message and give the user an opportunity to back out of that or to carry out the action. And uh, for just a moment, I'm going, to, I'm going to avoid that because it's a destructive action and I might want to jump, jump back over here. So I'll just back away from that. But essentially what would happen is the uh, person would no longer be listed here and they would not have access to the view of the page. So let's take a quick look at the code. When we're viewing uh, the person page, we have a list of companions and each companion is rendered sort of as a small component. And we added this new uh, section to the companion card. And actually, maybe I'll just move this to the side here so we can see. So each uh, companion here in the list has um, some details like their name and whether or not they're an organizer or coordinator. Uh, I use organizer in the code, so it's a bit confusing. I keep, uh, I should make this consistent. Care coordinator does have a little bit of a better ring to it. Group coordinator, care organizer, group organizer. I'm not sure they're kind of interchangeable, but we should have them. Uh, we should have consistency in the code and the user interface. So I'll try to clean that up later. But we want to first check that um, when this list is being rendered for each uh, companion, that the um, if the user is in the organizer's um, list for this person, that they uh, can remove other uh, companions. But we don't want the um, user to be able to remove themselves in this case. There may be another use case that crops up where a user could be... Um, maybe they're not a coordinator, but they want to remove themselves. Uh, that would be an else clause to this if, and I didn't uh, capture that use case in today's uh, coding session. But essentially, if the user's an organizer and they're not uh, they're not being rendered here, they're not viewing themselves, they can uh, remove the companion by clicking that button. It um, will go to this delete companion view and it passes two bits of context information. Uh, the person ID, which is this universally unique ID, it's also available in the template context, and the companion ID. Now this is a sequential ID that's automatically generated by Django. So while this is the only really required bit of information in order to perform this delete operation, I just went ahead and uh, also included the person ID there for consistency and I don't know, just as a kind of a um, little bit of extra information, you have to have two bits of information and one is uh, extremely hard, if not you know, basically impossible to guess. And the other one could be inferred um, through um, other means. And essentially, you know, we link to this and we translate this uh, text that should appear when you hover. Let me get the contact, the focus there on the browser. And when we click that button, it takes us to this form. Now this uh, basically is provided by Django and you'll see in the view, it's a default Django uh, class-based view. But we're uh, extending our base HTML. So everything, you know, we've got our uh, template um, navigation menu and uh, other um, CSS and things like that. We're localizing text. So we need to um, bring these internationalization tags into play. And in the content block, we're going to render this form that was provided by Django with a post, which makes a post request to the same URL. And we have some internationalized text that says, are you sure you want to remove this person from the, this companion from the person? 
here we're using a local uh, template uh, context variable, context object name to provide a kind of user friendly, a developer friendly um, text instead of the word object and from person. So it's, it's semantic and I'm just passing those into this block trans by a with argument and giving them, you know, kind of consistent names inside there. We have um, a submit button that will submit the form and post it to the path here. And I need to localize that. I just now noticed. And then if you want to back out, we've got, I need to localize this as well, or internationalize this, uh, a cancel button. So I'll do those internet, I'll add these internationalization tags off the summary, which takes you back to the um, person page again. Boom. Boom. Now, if I click here, it's going to submit the view, submit the um, a post request to the same view. So we so far we've submitted a get request, which returns this form and renders the template. Now the post request, both of those are uh, passed to this companion delete view, and you can see the URL structure here is the person ID here. And notice that we're in the people app, so everything is prefixed with the um, with people as part of our global URL configuration. And notice that the companion ID here, the primary key, is sequential. So it's a bit easy to guess. The access control logic is very straightforward uh, to prevent the um, uh, non-authorized user from deleting this um, companionship relationship. Uh, but anyway, I so <laughs> again, I added this extra bit of information that you have you need to have in order to even access this page so i'll show you what happens you know if you don't have that information oops and you try to delete that so let's say we omit that altogether which was my original url structure you know you're just going to get a 404 and this is the only bit of information that's actually needed again to make that deletion but if you do have the two bits of information you have the person id and you somehow know the companion id uh, you'll get a forbidden error so let's take a quick look at the view and i'll try to wrap up this session so we're just inheriting from the django delete view and we want to make sure that the user is logged in and they pass a test i'm not sure if i pass these in, in the correct order i might need to swap the order on that but essentially when you're running the user passes test you're going to be looking at a user in the and the request and if they are an anonymous user the user won't object won't be available so i guess i could uh, test that out real quick by logging out and then trying to access that delete okay so, so it seems to behave correctly it, um, passes you to the login page cool in this delete view, it's a Django uh, generic class-based view. We're so we're just going to pass it the model name and again that context object name. So it's basically your template's a little bit more readable. Instead of using the word object, you have like what the object represents. When you successfully delete, again we just re, um, create a reverse um, URL. We redirect the user to the uh, person detail for the person that of which you're <laughs> who's um, companion you're removing essentially so we have this local object uh, that has a person um, foreign key and which has an ID field here's the sort of the most uh, involved parts we want to make sure that only the care organizer can remove the companions and that these two bits of information are, are present that they that the person making this request um, to delete that they know the you, the person's ID, so the user that's making the request knows the person ID and the companion ID. You know, those. Uh, this alone is hard, like next to impossible to guess, and those two together are like you know basically uh, impossible to guess more or less. I don't know. So we're just going to prepare those. We get the who's requesting it. Uh, sorry, we get the person ID from the request, and we get the companion from the view, and. We're just going to grab that companion, the person from the companionship, just to make our code a little more succinct. 
and we get the the user actually from the request whether or not they're anonymous. Uh, if they're anonymous, they would not have made it this far. They would have been redirected already to the uh, sign-in view. And our two tests are basically the user can remove the companion. And that uh, would basically mean that they are one of the organizers, the care organizers for this person. So this is like a list of um, related users. And for the users in that list, they're good to go. The other one is that we've got these two bits of information I mentioned earlier. So it's just that the um, request person ID matches the relationship person ID. It's a bit verbose, but anyway, if you pass both of those um, tests, then you're able to perform this action. And the companion is no longer visible. And uh, I don't remember. I don't remember my password was for that testing user, but you kind of get the point that they would not be able to uh, access that person any longer and uh, would get a, uh, they wouldn't appear in the people list for them and would um, be unable to access the page if they, even if they had the direct link. Another user I can't remember what my throwaway password was for that user. <laughs> In any case, this has been another live code session. If you're interested in uh, seeing more about how this project is uh, structured and some of the um, use cases we're trying to solve, you can check us out on GitHub at github.com slash jerrylife slash companionship care. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.